In chemistry, we use either the metric system or the international system, or SI system, as units for our measurements. Most American students are most familiar with U.S. customary units, which include feet, pounds, and degrees Fahrenheit, to name a few base units. The major drawback of this system is that conversion factors from one unit to another are seemingly random. 12 inches to a foot, 3 feet to a yard, 1,760 yards to a mile. Almost all measurement conversions require a unique and or complicated conversion factor. The metric system, on the other hand, is a decimal system. Converting centimeters to meters to kilometers only requires dividing by a few powers of 10. In this video, I'll go over the metric and SI base units for length, mass, time, and temperature. Then I'll walk you through some metric prefixes and show you how to use those to convert measured values. We'll start with units of mass. In the U.S. customary system, mass and weight are both measured in pounds. This can be a little confusing, as mass and weight are not technically interchangeable quantities. An object's weight is its mass multiplied by the force of gravity acting on it. As long as we're staying on Earth, that means that the terms can be casually treated as if they were the same thing. If we traveled to the moon, however, an object's mass would not change while its weight would. In a physics class, this distinction between mass and weight is very important. It is slightly less important in general chemistry. The metric system uses the gram as its metric base unit, while the SI system uses the kilogram. Both systems use a unit called newtons for weight, a unit derived from kilograms along with a few other units. A kilogram, as we'll see when we get to prefixes, is equal to a thousand grams. The SI system uses the kilogram as its base unit because a gram is very small and because newtons are based on kilograms. The metric system uses the gram as a base unit because it doesn't include any prefixes. A kilogram weighs a little more than two pounds. Originally, grams and kilograms were defined in terms of an actual physical metal cylinder. The prototype kilogram was the definition of the unit and something that had an identical weight to that prototype cylinder was said to have a mass of one kilogram. Unfortunately, even though the cylinder is kept sealed and under vacuum, its mass has changed slightly over time. And so in 2019, the SI definition of a kilogram was changed. Now it's based on Planck's constant, which is one of the universal constants defined during the discovery of quantum mechanics. For length, both the metric and SI systems use the meter as a base unit. A meter is a little bit longer than a yard. The original definition of the meter relied on a physical sample, much like the kilogram. Because of the impermanence of physical standards, meters were also redefined in the SI system in 2019. They are now based on the distance light travels in a given amount of time in a vacuum. That's another universal constant found during early quantum mechanics research. Time is sort of the odd man out among metric and SI base units. The official base unit of time is the second, and you will often see fractions of seconds given in prefixed units, such as a nanosecond. For most amounts of time longer than a second, however, the traditional units of minutes, hours, days, and years are often used instead of the metric prefixes. The last base unit that we will worry about now is the unit for temperature. The U.S. customary unit of temperature is the degree Fahrenheit, where 32 degrees is the freezing point of water and 212 degrees is the boiling point. The Fahrenheit scale was created using various salt solutions to fix specific points. In the metric system, degrees Celsius are used, with water freezing at zero degrees and boiling at 100 degrees. While these numbers seem to fit in more neatly with a decimal system, they do have one major drawback in common with the Fahrenheit scale. 
we'll cover this more later in the semester, but the temperature of any object is proportional to the motion of its atoms or molecules. For this relationship to hold true, scientists required a temperature scale that could not give negative temperatures. The Kelvin scale used in the SI system has its zero point fixed at absolute zero. That's the temperature where an object would be so cold that its atomic motion would completely stop. The size of a degree Kelvin is equal to the size of a degree Celsius with 100 degrees separating the freezing and boiling points of pure water. All of the base units in either the metric or SI system can be modified using a standard set of prefixes. Adding a prefix can make a unit larger or smaller, helping to avoid the use of scientific notation. You'll need to learn these metric prefixes and their corresponding powers of 10. I'll show you how to use them in a moment, but there are a few things about the prefixes you should be aware of first. We will not be using hecto or deca, so don't worry about those prefixes. You may run across the prefixes PETA with a capital P or FEMTO with a lowercase f. These correspond to 10 to the positive or negative 15th, respectively. The capitalization is important. A capital prefix will always have a positive exponent. This allows us to distinguish between mega, <clears throat> capital M, and milli, lowercase m, for example. Micro is a little bit special. It's usually represented by a lowercase Greek letter mu, which you can see in the green circle just above the word micro. Sometimes, though, it's abbreviated with a lowercase mc, particularly in health science fields. I prefer the mu, I will use the mu, but if you have trouble inserting Greek letters into documents that you're typing up, you, are, you can use the MC as its abbreviation. Each metric prefix can be added to each metric base unit. So there's a lot of combinations that we can have. For example, a capital G signifies the prefix giga, which is equivalent to 10 to the ninth power or a one followed by nine zeros. A gigameter, abbreviated capital G lowercase m, then is equal to a billion meters. We can write a conversion factor stating that one gigameter is equal to 10 to the ninth meters and use that to convert measurements. When you are writing conversion factors, always remember the power of 10 always should be paired with the base unit. So the prefixed unit does not take the power of 10. 